Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be discussing a very important and interesting topic and that is diabetic ketoacidosis, which is also commonly known as DKA. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of diabetic ketoacidosis, let's take a closer look at what are ketone bodies. So ketone bodies are also commonly known as ketones and are compounds produced by the liver during a process called gluconeogenesis, which is a process in which the liver creates glucose for the body cells in times of fasting and starvation. There are three main specific type of ketone bodies that the liver can produce. They are acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone. So in normal patients who don't suffer from diabetes, in times of starvation or fasting, our body needs some sort of fuel in order for its daily processes to be carried out as it normally would. So in this period of time, our body actually breaks down the fats or the fatty acids in our body and produces glucose in this way. So that even if we aren't taking in any food, so we aren't taking in any glucose in our diet, our body can use the fat reserves to fuel itself for its daily energy processes. So what actually happens in patients who now suffer from diabetes is that even though we have large amounts of glucose in the blood, we don't have the insulin which is produced. So in these patients, because the insulin is not available, the body cannot use the glucose which is in the blood that is taken in through our diet. So our body actually continuously starts breaking down the fats in the body or the fatty acids in the body to produce energy so that it can go on with its daily processes. So in short, it says ketone bodies are reserve fuel for energy production in the body, especially for the brain. So it's very important that this process actually occurs because the ketone bodies can actually cross the blood-brain barrier or the BBB, which can actually fuel the brain and allow it to go on with these daily activities. So now that we know what ketone bodies are, let's take a closer look at what is diabetic ketoacidosis. So diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA, is a life-threatening pathology which affects most patients who suffer from type 1 diabetes and a handful of patients who suffer from type 2 diabetes. It usually occurs in these patients because their body doesn't produce enough insulin. The cells in their body can't use the sugar in their blood for energy, so they use fat for fuel instead. Diabetic ketoacidosis occurs when the body starts breaking down fat at a rate that is much too fast. The liver processes the fat into a fuel called ketones, which causes the blood to become too acidic. So in this little image on my left side of the screen, we have our pancreas and it says type 1 diabetes because diabetic ketoacidosis is most commonly associated with the majority of patients who suffer from type 1 diabetes. So in this image, we have our pancreas here. And as you can see, this iris has decreased insulin in the blood vessels. So if we have little or no insulin being produced by the pancreas, we have increased glucose in the blood due to low insulin production. And the muscle is unable to use the glucose due to the low insulin levels, so it'll have to look for another source of energy. And because this process occurs, we, we have this process which occurs, which is the glycogen and protein breakdown, which causes diabetic ketoacidosis or ketosis. So another problem that we have with these increasing amounts of ketones in the blood is the acidosis. Because these compounds have a low pH, so the more we create these ketones, which are able to fuel us, the more acidic our blood will become. So it has its ups and its downs. So eventually these patients will go into a severe form of acidosis and may even die because of this acidic pH in the blood. So that is why diabetic ketoacidosis is commonly referred to as a medical emergency or a life-threatening pathology. So now let's take a closer look at what are the causes of diabetic ketoacidosis. So when our body doesn't produce enough insulin, the cells can't use the sugar in the blood for energy, so they use fat for fuel instead, as we've mentioned. So burning fat makes acids called ketones, and if the process goes on for a while, they could build up in the blood of the patient. That excess acid in the blood throws off the patient's entire homeostatic system. So normally, our pancreas produces insulin, which are these little green guys here, and the glucose is shown by these little blue dots. So our insulin moves into the glucose cells, and our muscles are able to use them. But in patients who suffer from diabetes, the pancreas will produce less or no insulin and we have a high amount of glucose in the blood and the insulin moves less into the glucose cells. So as you can see here, we have very little parachutes compared to here, where we have a lot of parachutes that enter the muscle. So most commonly, DKA is caused by type 1 diabetes because these patients produce little or no insulin 
and in type 2 diabetes less commonly because the patient there does produce some amount of insulin. So what are some signs and symptoms in diabetic ketoacidosis? So a point to take in is that signs and symptoms in diabetic ketoacidosis may appear very quickly and they may include frequent urination, extreme thirst, high blood sugar levels, high levels of ketones in the urine, and this is because eventually if it builds up too much in the blood, it'll spill into the urine because there'll be an excess in the blood, the body will try to get rid of it, so it'll spew it all into the urine, and therefore the patient will present with high levels of ketones in the urine. The patient will also experience nausea or vomiting, abdominal pain, confusion, a fruity smelling breath, and this is a key point to remember because these patients always present with a specific kind of smell. And once you smell it once, you'll never forget it. So this can be a key sign in your diagnosis when the patient presents with this fruity smelling breath. The patient may also experience a flushed face, fatigue, rapid breathing, and dry mouth and skin. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis. So the first thing we can do is blood testing to measure the blood sugar levels because usually these patients will have high blood sugar levels. So in essence, if there isn't enough insulin in the patient's body, the blood sugar level will rise. So these patients will present with hyperglycemia. We can also measure the blood ketone levels. So if we have high amounts of acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetone in the blood, then we know that the patient is suffering from a diabetic ketoacidosis. We can also measure the blood acidity level so the excess ketones in the patient's blood will cause the blood to become too acidic, so they will have a low pH. Some other things we can do to diagnose a patient with diabetic ketoacidosis is to measure the arterial blood gas levels, and this will also determine the blood's acidity level. And we can also test the patient's blood pressure. So patients in shock usually have a low blood pressure, and patients in diabetic ketoacidosis suffer a water deficit, which will also reduce the blood volume, thereby decreasing the blood pressure. So these patients will suffer from hypotension. So how can one go about treating a diabetic ketoacidosis? So as I mentioned before, diabetic ketoacidosis is a medical emergency and therefore treatment must be fast. So the first thing we can do is fluid replacement. So because these patients are usually vomiting, there's high levels of urine being produced, they have very low amount of fluid in the blood. So the first thing we can do is fluid replacement, which will replace all loss through excessive urination. And this will also help us to dilute the excess sugar in the blood. We can do electrolyte replacement because of the vomiting, rapid breathing, as well as the excess urination. The electrolytes can go off course. So electrolytes are minerals in the blood that can carry an electrical charge, such as sodium and potassium and chloride. And the absence of insulin can lower the level of several electrolytes in the blood. And a patient will receive electrolytes through a vein to help keep the heart, the muscles, and the nerve cells functioning normally. And finally, insulin therapy. So the insulin reverses the processes that cause diabetic ketoacidosis. In addition to fluids and electrolytes, you'll receive insulin therapy, usually through a vein. So when your blood sugar levels falls to about 200 milligrams per deciliter, which is about 11.1 millimoles per liter, and your blood is no longer acidic, you may be able to stop the intravenous insulin therapy and resume your normal subcutaneous insulin therapy. So the main three key points here to remember is the fluid replacement, electrolyte replacement, as well as IV insulin therapy until the patient's blood sugar levels start to drop to sort of normal levels and then they can continue with their subcutaneous insulin injections. And that brings us to the end of this video on diabetic ketoacidosis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you would like to download a copy of the presentation, please make sure to click the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.